Welcome back guys. Well, now with spring in the air and a lot of us are getting right back out into the woods, doing bird watching, hiking, camping, we're all gonna be at risk for getting a tick bite. So today I wanna talk to you about those little critters that like to suck our blood, but can be dangerous. Stay tuned. So ticks are essentially little spiders and they are found here, you know, in the woods and tall grasses, brushy areas, fields. And what they are, they're these little tiny bugs. Sometimes they're as small as even a sesame seed. And you can acquire them by walking through, you know, like we normally do through the woods and things like that and tall grasses and fields. They go through um, a few stages of their life cycle. So there's basically an egg, a larva form, and then a nymph and an adult. So there's four stages to their life. During the stages, they require a blood meal to feed and to survive. And so basically ticks can get a blood meal from anything like mammals, like us, deer, you know, mice are common, even birds, and rarely reptiles and amphibians, believe it or not. So they suck on the blood of those organisms and those are called the host. And if those animals have a particular disease, for example, and maybe you're familiar with you know, Lyme disease, uh, it's caused by an organism called Borrelia. If that host has that condition, basically the blood meal from the tick um, takes up that infection and then the tick can spread that on to another organism. So for example, if a mouse is carrying the Borrelia, the Lyme, and then the tick moves on to a different host and, for example, a human, and, and bites us and has a feed. Some of the spit from the, from the tick basically carries this infection and basically uh, injects it into our skin during the feeding process. So these little ticks have these little mouth parts that are really sharp and when they cling on to uh, an animal, for example, they crawl up, they find a good spot to feed and they insert their little mouth parts, their pincers there. The ticks also have a bit of a freezing, a numbing agent in their spit. And so when they bite you, sometimes you don't even feel it. Um, and then they secrete like a little bit of a cement-like substance to latch themselves on. And then they can feed for many hours, even days. Uh, and during that time is when these infections can be transmitted. Now, Lyme disease is the most famous uh, kind of infection. And that one um, is pretty nasty, you know, certainly it can infect uh, animals, including ourselves, leaving us, you know, feeling pretty sick with fevers and swollen joints uh, and sometimes a rash. So, you know, 70 to 80 percent of the time you're going to get that famous kind of bullseye rash uh, when you acquire the Lyme disease infection. Now, there's lots of other infections as well uh, that ticks can transmit and different ones transmit different infections depending on where you are located. The life stage of the tick is important in determining if it can actually transmit the disease. Um, so it's really important that we protect ourselves from these insects. One of the scariest new illnesses that ticks can transmit is called the red meat allergy. And what happens in uh, this situation is a lone star tick, which is, you tend to see lone star ticks right now uh, in North America in the, uh, the southern uh, and eastern US, I believe. And they're kind of marching upward with global warming. And what happens with people bitten by lone star ticks is that they can develop a red meat allergy. So basically after the tick bite, a few hours later, you know, you're having your, your, you know, your supper, your steak, uh, sometimes even pork as well. It, certainly they can be affected uh, when you have pork. Hours later after you have your meal, suddenly you're breaking out in a rash. You could even die of a severe allergic reaction called anaphylaxis. That's really scary. And uh, it's called an alpha gal allergy. And I think it's a lifetime problem. Like it's not something that goes away. So I think there's a lot of new research going on with that. So just another reason why we should protect ourselves. So you might wonder why I'm doing this video now. I mean, there's tons of snow on the ground in our area at least. Um, but you know, ticks, they're active above four degrees Celsius. So you might think you're out of the woods <laughs> literally from getting a tick bite, but certainly um, four degrees Celsius, if there's exposed grass, shrubbery, they're gonna be out. And what they do is they like to hang out, you know, on the grass and the shrubs with, you know, they hang on by their, their third and their fourth pair of legs and they kind of wave their <laughs> arms in the air and they can sense your body heat and moisture and things like that and so when you brush up against them boom they latch on they're going to crawl up your leg and give you a bite so you want to protect yourself now and honestly any time of year where it's above four celsius you know you've got exposed grass and there's shrubbery around you're at risk certainly in the spring the nymphs are really active and the fall the adults are active but now year round if you're in an area where it's above four celsius 
you're gonna be at risk. So what do we do to protect ourselves against ticks? Well, some will say avoid outdoor areas altogether, stick on groomed trails, um, you know, have a really manicured lawn, and certainly those are ways to avoid tick bites for sure. Or go to areas really far north where, you know, there really are no ticks most of the year. However, that's not really practical for a lot of us. So what we need to do is consider, you know, what we wear, the time of year, obviously, when ticks are really, really active. Spring and fall is when we see huge peaks in activity. Uh, but remember, year round, we can see them. So what I like to do is uh, wear protective clothing. So long sleeve shirts, long pants. Uh, you can tuck your socks into the bottoms of your pants. And uh, you know, if you're going into some particularly shrubby area, you know, you can kind of put a hood on so that if uh, you're brushing against something um, that the ticks aren't gonna go down the back of your neck. Certainly I got my first tick uh, down by the Lake Ontario area. I was fully covered, but a tick kind of rolled off the back of my hat and went down my shirt and uh, bit me down on the back. Really, and that's because I backed up against a bush. So you might want to kind of do this with a hood uh, if you're going into those areas. And of course, you're not going to be making a fashion statement, but does it really matter? The other thing you can do uh, with your clothing is wear a light colored clothing. So if you were to see a little tiny black tick, little sesame seed kind of crawling up there, you'll be able to get it off quicker because you're going to see it stand out uh, on the light clothing. Also treating your clothes with permethrin uh, and wearing DEET about 20% uh, is really helpful. I'll put a link down below um, to the Centers for Disease Control information on ticks. Also they have a really cool algorithm to help you decide what uh, repellent is best for you and your family, especially for the kids. Another important thing is considering protecting your pets, especially dogs. You know, when they go uh, out in the bush with us, uh, they can certainly pick up ticks and bring them into the house on their fur. And dogs aren't immune to these uh, tick-borne diseases at all, so they need protection as well. There's lots of good tick repellents out there now, and uh, making sure to brush them when they come in from outside, because that's the quickest way to find ticks as well. And remember too to check yourselves when you come in from the outdoors. Um, if you're able to have a shower right away, uh, the faster you get these ticks off, the less likely they are to transmit disease. So you want to inspect yourself uh, when you get home. Uh, all over, have a, a buddy tick check you as well if you're out camping. Uh, showering is great because then you can kind of scrub around and feel if you have any attached to you. And especially don't forget to check your hair behind your ears, uh, things like that, because they, like they like to hide. I know quite a few people who have had them buried kind of in their scalp. For removal, uh, the best way is basically tweezers um, to remove them and you basically grasp them uh, just behind the head and pull out. Uh, wear gloves when you're handling them because you don't want them to pop on you. When they feed with blood, they swell up and they look like a piece of corn basically and you don't want to squish the infection into you from their saliva if they're still attached. So you want to be able to um, pull them out straight with the tweezers. Don't burn them. Don't apply Vaseline. Uh, don't use a cigarette butt. That's all myth. That doesn't work. Um, basically use the tweezers, pull them straight out. Uh, there's also some tick keys that you can get. They have a little slot in them. I've got two. You can carry them on your keychain so that you can basically go behind the head, between the head and the body, and pull up and out they come. So that's the safest way to remove them. If you do have a tick and it's been engorged and you're worried, certainly talk to your doctor uh, or go to a public health clinic. They know what to do. Uh, sometimes you have to get put on antibiotics um, just because the risk is so high. In our area, we have about 30% of the deer ticks in this area. That's a really common tick around here and it does transmit Lyme disease and 30% uh, of the ticks they've tested in the last couple of years have come back positive for Lyme. So ticks are here, they're here to stay, but we can also be really careful when we're out in the bush uh, all year round um, to protect ourselves and our pets from tick-borne disease. Really, who wants a bug attached to you and biting anyway? Pretty soon we'll be headed into black fly season and mosquito season. Thankfully, you've got a little break from that. Thanks guys for tuning in today. I hope you learned something new about ticks. Stay safe. Have a great week.